Hey guys, X Shine here, and today it's going to be uh, what patch notes is it? Let's look, patch 12.6. Uh, instead of getting right into it, I'm going to talk about little things because I just feel like it, and you know, I feel like people don't really watch this stuff anyway, so you know, might as well get personal with it, as in like just talk about things. Um, but you can skip ahead if you want to see like the patch notes, but I'm going to quickly talk about a few things. So, first off, uh, what have I been doing? I've been playing Wild Rift, I've been having a lot of fun with Wild Rift because I got a new phone. Uh, it was the Google Pixel 6. It's my first phone ever. Uh, not, not I'm joking. It's my first phone ever. And I'm having a blast playing that game. It's really fun. Uh, games are sometimes one-sided just because, you know, it's like be expected with Smurfs where people, like, uh, I mean, it's, it's such an old game league, but also, like, the one thing I'm seeing most prominently are Vein Smurfs or Karma Mid Smurfs where, like, they do the most literally degenerate strategies ever and act like they're good at the game like there's so many challenger players i last saw that like were abusing like supports mid like karma and stuff especially karma and it's like bro you're not good <laughs> i'm sorry uh it's kind of funny but like also like sometimes you get people who literally have no idea how to play the game i literally had a senna like had no idea to collect her souls the whole game like i, I don't even think i don't know what age they are but they are probably really young because they have no idea how to play the game but i've been having fun uh the glorious crimson El Elvelin skin on that game is really good so i was getting that as well um i almost have it i'm gold at least right i was i was bronze for a little bit for like i don't know 12 games bronze x9 right yeah um, no it, my team was the shit every game and i say that a lot but like i i think i have every right to say that okay uh <laughs> um i've also been playing a uh, new mmo I've been playing Dofus. Uh, Dofus is pretty fun, actually. It's a turn-based MMO, and it's actually really fun because uh, the maximum amount of time you can have a turn, I think, is 39 seconds. It's 30 seconds minimum, but if you take too long, it becomes, uh, you know, if, you, if you're if you fast, you get, like, 39 seconds a turn. Uh, so it's actually pretty fast-paced despite being turn-based because, you know, you have to go fast at a higher level because there's so many different combinations of moves. I find it actually really refreshing. Uh, one thing I didn't expect was I played the game 17 years ago, and I was expecting like a super outdated game. It's actually been graphically updated, so I've been actually having a blast with all the personality and artistic choices they've chosen with a lot of their places, like Wabbit Island. If you, if you Google like Wabbit Island, or maybe just keep it a surprise, honestly, it's a really cute place. It was like probably one of my favorite places in an MMO. Uh, honestly, it was a really fun place. I actually that was. Honestly, one of my favorite places in a, like like in an MMO, maybe even games in general. I I just thought it was such a it, it was a it's a very cute place, but I I, I just liked it because it I, to me it was just brimming with personality, brimming with inspiration. It was really, it was really nice. I really liked the whole experience. The dungeons were really cute. Like it, it put a smile on my face. So a game that does that is a good game to me. Um, I I try not to treat treat it too much as like a chore. I just play it like you know. So, so I try to enjoy the content. I, I wasn't reading things at first, though, because I was, you know, you know, I'm just trying to experience the game. But, like, w once you get, you know, into the game, then you're like, oh, I wish I read the lore and stuff. But, like, you can always just create another account or, like, maybe p other people can talk about the lore with you or something. Um, one thing I I'm tempted to do at some point for fun, like, but I don't know if I could. Well, I could, but it's just a, a bit time-consuming is... Some, some parts of the wiki are really outdated because just people don't... Like, um, RuneScape was really the only game that had, like, a super maintained wiki, honestly, um, that for an MMO. Maybe World of Warcraft, but I don't play that game. But, uh, yeah, like, this game, it's kind of like, you know, wiki, I don't think it really is a French thing. It's, like, a North American thing, so people don't, like, go on the wiki and stuff. And, like, you know, it, if you go outside the United States, because uh, this game was made in fr uh, France, and, uh, you know, it's not a... Uh, you know, it, people that speak English don't really play the game. Like, I'll, I think they do. I think a lot of people actually know English, believe it or not. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I honestly kind of, I'm digressing right now. But uh, the thing is, is uh, you know, I, I still have no clue what the hell I was talking about, you know. But, you know, I got these, you know, I got this giraffe. Someone sent this to me. It rattles. I don't know why. And this is Bully. I don't know why Bully's here. Um, oh, yeah, some people think that you, it actually helped me think. Uh, some people think that everyone just speaks French, so speak fr speaks French. I type like I have no idea what you just said, and they're like, "Oh, you're English," and I'm like, "Yeah." So I feel like a lot of people just assume everyone's French, because like I didn't know there's a North America community in this game. So yeah, I, I might play that game, you know, on um, 
on the side where I'm playing a league. Uh, I'm not sure what I would do. I don't know if I would do combat. If I was doing combat, I'd probably do farming. I don't. I kind of doubt I'd be doing quests. So I'd either be doing professions like fishing or farming or something. Farming can be fun, but I need to get a bit higher level to farm some exciting spots, honestly. Um, but I think I'm only level 79. And I'm, I'm <clears throat> if you're curious, I'm playing a hopper mage. <clears throat> Gosh, excuse me. Um, so that's been, I've been having a pretty blast with that. Um, you wouldn't believe, I'm, I'm only level 79 and the max level is 200. And I've been dealing with mechanics ever since level 60 that are like end game runescape mechanics. In vulnerability for turns, insta kill mechanic, uh, minion spawning with different weaknesses. Like the shit that's in the game is pretty freaking crazy. So if you want a challenge, I would definitely say play this game. It's kind of like chess. And like, I, I know a bit about chess. I know a lot of people got into chess. When people got into chess, I stopped caring about chess. Call me a hipster, right? But um, yeah, if you like chess, I think you'd actually like this game. It's actually really fun. I, especially if you have a duo. If you have a duo mate, it'd be really fun. But if you don't have a duo mate, it's fine because there's something called companions in the game and they act like a, a second person for you. So you won't struggle against things uh, too much. Like, they're not just, like, pay to win, automatically win the game. They scale with your level. That's another thing I like about the game is a lot of the quests scale with your level. On top of Dofus a lot, when this is the patch notes video, which is kind of funny. Uh, so maybe I'll just leave it at that. But, yeah, you can expect some Dofus uh, gameplay in my stream. I don't know if I'd ever make videos. Maybe. That'd be funny. But uh, I've been having fun with that game. A lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> but, so, but, yeah, before we get to the patch notes, uh, I just want to say... Um, I think they changed their rules with the LCS because I was going to say, like, well, why are they showing this picture? And, you know, because I thought there was a mass requirement, right? Um, and if you go here, uh, it says, masks are strongly encouraged door indoors in all areas and where social distan distancing cannot be maintained. Due to COVID precautions, the LCS won't be hosting a meet the pros experience for spring finals. It's weird they say it, it, they're strongly encouraged. Are they not being enforced? This is the only instance of masks being mentioned besides cosplay masks. So I don't know if that means that you actually aren't required because when they were selling the tickets, they were like, oh, you need to wear a mask. Unless it's like, was it, I swear it was for the LCS finals. Maybe it was for the spring finals, but isn't it the spring finals? I don't know. But regardless, I, I don't know. I, I just thought I'd update people because if you don't, because when I first saw this, I'm like, you know, well, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get to the patch notes. This will be a quick patch notes, guys. Uh, I just want to catch up with what I was doing. So, I've been doing that. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> let's make sure I'm streaming my stream. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, Azir. Uh, health growth increased. Health growth was 92. Now it's 105 per level. Now his total HQ is 2116. Now it's 2337. That is actually crazy. He 221 HP. That is crazy. Um... Yeah, he's a scaling champion, and and again, this is a bigger buff be than it seems because he's a solo laner, uh, so he'll get this really fast, and especially in pro play where it's more passive, like, this is essentially a free, like, how much would it be, uh, 50, 60 plus HP easily uh, until a meaningful encounter occurs, like, it's just crazy, even level 2, it's, it can matter a lot, like, that's just a crazy buff. It doesn't buff his damage, but it, he can still get nuked, but, like, bro, that's kind of crazy. Darius, Nox, and Guilty, minimum true damage was 100 to 300, center hybrid percent bonus AD. Now it's 125 to 375, plus center 5% bonus AD. Um, that's pretty crazy, honestly. That means... What? As a very... His ult's total damage could be... That's a freaking crazy... Why is he getting buffed? You know, like, I'm actually gonna look at this, because I've always thought Darius was strong. I don't know why he keeps getting buffed. It's like, I honestly don't understand. Darius mains are, I guess, really good at yelling at the Riot support team or something. Like, so this is what he is. So, 50% uh, in all matches in the world. Uh, let's go Diamond 2. 50% still. Master Plus, 50% still. Challenger. Like, it, it's still fine. It's like, why well, it doesn't need to be 50%. It's pretty close to 50%. So, yeah, um, I don't know. Apparently, apparently you know, like, is that a North America thing? A North America player is bad or something? I don't know. They seem to be doing better off. Um, they they fall off in lower ranks. What about Korea? Um, looks good to me. So, a chop, wow. Like, I don't know why he's getting buffed. It beats me. But that's actually crazy because it's, it's literally doubled. Um, 
yeah, double the damage. So he, this his max rank one gets hundred another 150 true damage. His first rank gets a bonus uh, 50 damage. That's freaking crazy. Well, he's broken. Go play Darius top if you want to carry games because no one can fight you with Hole Breaker. Uh, Hector is getting nerfed yet again, guys. Woo! I don't really care, honestly. He's a tainted champion. Uh, base damage. Uh, so, Tanker Room. Wow, I've never heard of that one before. Oh, taking over Pro again. Really? Is he? I don't know. I don't really watch that part of Pro because it gets kind of boring because people just play the same thing over and over. I really wish Ryan could just say Shake of the Metas. Nerf lead. Nerf Sins out. Nerf Jarvan, please. Like, like, please just nerf them. Like, I want to see different champions. Uh, buff them. Bu Mumu needs mat mana, on, like, in the jungle or faster clearing because he... he if he wants to clear fast, he has no mana. If he wants to clear slow, he has mana, but then he clears too slow. It's like, I don't get it. Like, it's weird when you have a champion like Sejuani who clears, like, lightning fast. And then you have champions like that. That just, I don't know. I, I really wish they just buffed something. Oh, well. Uh, base damage was uh, 60 to 208 plus 85% bonus 80. Now 60 to 180. That's, um... Pretty meaningful nerf after level five, honestly. Uh, level your level three, like or level four, or whatever. Uh, when you actually fight people, not too much has changed. But yeah, that's a pretty meaningful nerf. They also didn't give him any bonus AD scaling. Um, they might have buffed this because whenever they do this, uh, Hecarims get their AD through Conquer or Phase Rush because Phase Rush. Gives a movement speed, which counts as bonus AD. So, yeah. They've been trying to make up for that, but Hecarim's a very unique case where his movement speed passive, you know, gives him AD. <laughs> so then it's bonus AD. Uh, devastating charge. Um, oh, this is the biggest. This is a huge nerf. Minimum damage was th uh, 30 to 110, uh, and now it's 30 to 90. That's, pr I mean, the minimum damage is not changed too much. Uh, I think it's the maximum damage got nerfed really hard. Yeah, it was 60 to, the, the maximum damage was 60 to 220. Now it's 60 to 180. So again, like, at level 3, like, 5 plus, it's not changed, but, like, late game, dude, this guy got nerfed hard. Like, jeez. I don't know. Um. Yeah, it's kind of sad. I don't know. I remember when people don't want to really play Hecarim, but now everyone just plays him and plays him like People don't even play him well, which is sad. People... People just die because they're not used to how fast he, like, he can gank a lane, leave, and then go back and be there in, like, three seconds. And it's like, people just are do not play against that well. They just suck. So, RIP, I guess. Um, allow a quality life change on R and several bug fixes. Uh, no balance changes here. We fix bugs. Okay, uh, R, leap of faith. R, leap of faith. Uh... Leap of Faith out cast with Alawi facing towards your cursor, allowing for more favorable tentacle spawn locations. Um, well, I mean, this is a buff. I mean, no, it is a balance change, though. You know, like, like this isn't a qua like, like, our Leap of Faith out cast with Alawi facing towards your cursor, allowing for more favorable tentacle spawn. Wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. I may be stupid. Okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait, so when she casts her R, she now cast with Alawi face towards her curve. Is it talking about, like, I, I, okay. Well, it, I think it is still a buff. Uh, I'm not sure how that works with her facing a direction. Is it the direction she's facing spawn? I think it does. That's actually interesting. Well, I guess it is. Oh, I, yeah, I, I'm guessing that's how it works. I mean, I still a buff, so I'm not stupid. Um, Bug fixes when allow a tech. I also like that they put this here because before they used to put it in the bottom. Really like that. I don't know who did that, but someone did that. Maybe someone watches my patch notes video from Ryan. Hmm. Okay. Uh, when allow a attacks a vessel while empowered powered by W harsh lesson. Nearby inactive tentacles will now slam her target as soon as they become active. Short delay removed. Um. Yeah. This was a bug? That's funny, yeah, because I was confused, because I, I would make a tentacle spawn, but then I would use my W, and nothing would happen. So, like, I, I, yeah, that's pretty bad. Spell queuing with has been added to W, Harsh Lushen, and R, Leap of Faith, so you can now buffer other spells when casting them. That's good. Harsh Lushen's uh, visual indicator has been fixed, and when that will show the correct range of her empowered base attacks. That's good. Tentacles can no longer spawn on either team's base gates on Summoner's Rift. Um, I wonder what implications that had. Like, do they spawn in between the base gate? I don't really know. I don't know. 
Vessels no longer contribute to Elias' creep score when they expire or are destroyed. Whoa, that's funny. Wow, you, people look pro. Q, technical special E, test of spirit will now be visible to enemy champions when cast from Fog of War. That was invisible before? That's crazy. What the hell? Okay, that's reasonable. Jax, uh, meta, yep, okay, so we're, we're going to look at this before we look at anything. Uh, let's look at Jax's win rate. I might be wrong because people just suck at him. So yeah, uh, so Jax is his top lane. Uh, let's look at you know like Diamond Two. Yep, pretty good. Yep, yep. And yep, it looks like it looks like looks like when you're like the lower elo you go, the because like like his win rate's not even bad in low elo. It's like wow, pretty much forty nine percent. And it's like why are we buffing this guy? Like I don't agree. Like I again, I already knew it. Like. I should have said this before, but like I, I, I knew like I don't like this patch that much. I think it's actually hot garbage, honestly. Like, wow, this, so the fifty-one percent win rate challengers are gonna win more games, you know? It's just like, although at the same time, it doesn't really matter because they're not actually challengers because rating shit nowadays in this game. Um, I mean, if we, let's go look at runes quick. Uh, let's, no, let's go to rune sets. Is that it? Yeah, wait, is it? Souls and abilities? No. Rune table. I think Conquer is statistically better, but people are dumb. I don't really know, though. Beats me. Um, health uh, was 593, now 615, so a total of, what, 22? Yeah, 22. 22 uh, HP. Uh, pretty good. Um, hey, is it 22? I'm just stupid. Uh, I guess I'm guessing. Yeah, it's 22. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, empowered W magic damage was 40 to 180. Now it's 50 to 190. So, it, I mean, it's... That lo level, his level 1's, like, his early game's a lot stronger, which may make his all ins better. So he can be more volatile in solo queue, especially. Um... I, I, I just don't think he needed a buff at all, but, you know, like, dude, I... Vine... Like... I, I mean, I, I always... <laughs> This is where I'm gonna look at I'm gonna bring up vibe where win rate's gonna be okay, but it, it doesn't say everything. Oh my goodness gracious. Like I, I, I don't like Vi guys. Like, see, you know, I know I'm <laughs> Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I probably should have showed this live, but I don't wanna look stupid, but I'm just gonna, I was gonna show anyway. So oh looks like a Vi. Oh all ranks. Wow, look how popular she is, you know, in the world. Okay. It's like platinum. Wow, she's pretty good in platinum. Oh, she's pretty good in diamond. Oh, pretty good in diamond too for some reason. Oh, the master players are good. Grandmaster, wow, everyone's really good. And then as soon as you get a challenger, it's like, yeah, she kind of sucks at high level. <laughs> so, RIP. I don't know. I, I just think Vi, I, I wouldn't mind if Vi's damage went down in exchange for more utility. Like, I really wouldn't because like, I think she just needs a bit, bit, bit of a better clear with her W damage, nerf a little bit of her ratios, and give her more utility, like with like a moving speed on her W or something like Wild Rift, right? I don't know, something like that. Um, so yeah, this Nidalee got buffed for absolutely no reason. So I, I, I already looked at this, but you know, let's look at this look at Nidalee quick. We go, we're going to Nidalee. Um, yeah, this is what's that? Platinum. It's all, all ranks. All ranks, forty-seven percent, because people in low elo have no idea how to play Nidalee. I, I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea how to play Nidalee. I, she's a champion. I mean, like, I could play her, but I just never bothered. I I played like one game on her like nine years ago. So diamond. Uh, so platinum. Yeah, people are kind of. I mean, it's okay. Diamond. They become pretty good. Diamond two becomes pretty good again. Master. Pretty good still. Then grandmaster. Pretty good. Then challenger. Oh, just highest win rate. It's like. She, she's just gonna completely demolish everyone. Like, why are we buffing her? I don't know why we're buffing her. Like, I I hate seeing like like I, I don't know. I I'm just so annoyed at at how pro played high like, high elo jungle or like like is always just Nidalee. It, it's like like in 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 boosting. It's it's Rengar, Graves, Nidalee, sometimes Kindred, and sometimes in Zao, but not really. Um, but. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, actually, yeah, he, he's kind of like sleeper for some reason because, I don't know, he's just broken, but they get nerfed recently, though. How's he doing, actually? Let's look how Zenzal's doing since that nerf. 
Wow, he's been hurting apparently. Oh, wow, that nerf was apparently quite significant. Yeah, his ultimate got nerfed, which was a get out of jail free card essentially. So yeah, he was a boosting champion. I don't know if he is anymore, but yeah, RIP him. Uh, good riddance. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of irritating how these champions like are, are played in boosting. They're never nerfed for some reason, even though they're so freaking broken. Even besides boosting, and then in pro play, all I see is Lee, Jarvan. Uh, what's the other one? Oh yeah, Zin Zhao. Zin Zhao finally got nerfed though. Uh, so now we still need Ner Lee and Jarvan. And it's like, where's the nerf? Why does Lee have 200% AD ratio? Like, you know, it's just like, it's never been changed since release. I don't know why. It's just been left like that forever. Like, this nerf is scaling, so he stops one-shotting people and doing too much damage to objectives. And because he has percentage execution damage too, it scales insanely high. Um, it's pretty much like, if he has his up, he just instantly kills you. But like, I, I just don't get like, they talk about like, oh, we've been seeing this in pro play. Like they nerf Hecarim. Like, like I always, whenever Hecarim's in pro play, he just he gets nerfed so fucking fast. And I, I, and excuse me, but like he gets nerfed so fast every time in pro play. Meanwhile, I was like, I see Graves picked in jungle all the time. He gets nerfed. He was so broken that people are just playing him top lane. So what do they do now? Maybe they just kick him out of the jungle and make him a top laner. Maybe they just make him an AD carry now and say this was a mistake making him a jungler because if he's a good jungler. Uh, he's gonna be a good soul laner or something like that um but yeah like i i i remember seeing graves jungle every game uh i can pro play jarvin and lee and it's just like why are they never nerfed they're even good in standard play as in like solo queue games so like why are they never nerfed i don't know but oh you see i remember shavana got buffed a little bit oh she was in pro play for like a month gutted uh, it, it, I just don't get it. I, I it's like because they talk about we've been seeing too much presence, but it's like, bro, I see so much presence. Like I remember in Italy, like eight years ago, there was a rider. I was like, oh, uh, Italy on according to our stats is just fine. It's like, what are you talking about? She's just demolishing everyone. And what ended up happening? Kindred, Graves, and Nidalee ended up making them have to nerf the jungle XP for everyone because they're ranged. They're all no. Notice that the the champions that got jungle xp destroyed and ruined jungle roll was these range champions these range oppressive champions i don't know why they were never gutted i have no idea but they ruined the jungle and they've been kept like this i, I it, it honestly just kind of irritates me it really does because it, it, that was such a disgusting point in time this full of abusers they they don't even jungle they just heard lane harass with infinite heals kindred and gray kindred and nidalee and gray's gonna heal a ton because of his freaking how much damage he does a single target and he can kite, so he can get passive healing back before Omni Vamp was exists in jungle items, and it's just like it honestly makes me actually a bit frustrated because it, it's like, bro, if spice up the meta, like, come on, spice it up, you know? It's just like, just freaking nerf them, please. Give a little bit of love to like a Mumu jungle, a little bit, like you know, stop buffing him in general and make him be played support, please. Like, buff his jungle damage or like something please like if they buff his jungle damage so he couldn't didn't have to cast his e as much for instance that would be a big buff because then you would need to buff his mana per level which would buff his support um it, it's very frustrating so oh lily is getting a buff guys for absolutely no reason absolutely no reason so, so what happened so oh mana cost was 40 to 60 under w now it's 30 to 50 huge change because what does this change mean well she already has infinite mana because well her cooter forms absolutely freaking free uh and also the how much mana you get in the jungle, but this what this means is that you can spam this more freely. You can stay out of the jungle more and just be annoying in the middle of someone's lane in between turrets. E primal surge mana cost was fifty to ninety, now it's fifty to seventy. Absolute huge change. Oh, let's look at the the max order because the max order can be relevant here. I actually have no clue, so let's look at the max order. Um, spells and abilities for you know let's look at master plus. Uh, the max Q. Q-E-W, that is the build. So, uh, e, e is back second, so this is relevant. Q is it wasn't buffed uh, so far. So, um, this is relevant uh, mid-game. Mid-game roaming, just roaming all day, going middle of lanes and spamming. Cast range was 600, now it's 900. Now it matches W Bushback. Um, that's freaking crazy how far. She can literally... So, so, she's incredibly fast because of her jumps with her cougar form. And then she has the bush... Br or brush... Uh, movement speed passive so she can come in for a super clutch heal now um 
Yeah, because yeah, the clutch it's even more clutch because like it heals yeah plus one percent per one percent missing HP. Like so like she's not like a Sorak. She's like a roaming, annoying, chip jungler that acts like a Soraka now. Like wow, that sounds really fun. I really like versing a jungle Soraka that throws spears and can instantly clear camps. Like. I'm really excited for this, guys. At W Pounce, AoE damage ratios was 225 to 250. Just in case you missed it somehow, they, they're they making sure you hit it now. Like, it, it, it's just like, why? Like, th this is going to be the most oppressive shit in the world. Like, I, I need to, I, I, we're about to talk about Rengar. I need to nerf Rengar. I, I, I need to ban him. And it's like, Karthus is broken too. I, I, I don't know. Oh, I, I've been playing Rengar Wild Rift, by the way. Uh, just because, I don't know, I see it different, and I, you know, win my game, so I'm playing a little bit of ELO boosting champions, right? Don't ELO boost, though, guys. Um, wow, why is Karthus' win rate so fucking garbage right now? Does something happen to him? I have actually no idea why his win rate's bad. Maybe people are just shit at him or something. What happened? I just have no idea why he's on, on, on U.GG, his win rate is actually so bad. I don't, I don't give a fuck, bro. He's broken. How about you, I mean, hey, it's bad because people are bad, so you don't kick him out of the jungle. That's, that, that's what I say. So Rengar, um, this is a adjustment, but it's actually a ginormous buff with absolutely no downsides. Last I saw it, so let's look at it. Uh, passive Unseen Predator. Uh, Rengar's leap will now gain one Frosty. Uh, so before it was only if he has zero Frosty. Now it's upon losing all for Frosty stacks, no matter how much Frosty he gains before his next leap. Um, only so so if he jumped, he would only gain one Frosty if he had zero Frosty. Uh, now it's Rengar's next leap will grant one ferocity upon losing all ferocity stacks. No matter how much ferocity he gains before his next leap. Isn't that freaking crazy? Oh, so like, so he, so say I just got my empower. So let's say I, I leaped onto it. I, I get, I got, I'm going to red buff. I leap onto it. I use my QWE combo, UQ, and then. Like, let's say I just, like, attack, attack, I'm, like, IQ again, and I go off the bush. Oh, I have a stack of frosty. Let me go into the bush. And then you go back on it. Uh, then you, you still gain the frosty attack. So they actually lowered the skill cap a little bit on this champion, which is kind of interesting. I mean, I, I don't know if I actually really care about it. I mean, I'm not sure, because I'm playing quite a bit in Wild Rift, but I'm getting used to, like, oh, after you use your combo or before you use a combo, uh, you know, go and uh, get a leap off first. Um, maybe people are sucked at that. Maybe it's like a thing where it's like because people suck at that, it's hard to balance Rengar because people aren't doing that correctly or something. I mean, I I really wish I played this champion more because I like having a bigger, more impactful feedback when it comes to these things because this seems like such a small change, but it can have huge implications. Um, but it, it overall, it, it it's it's pretty much the same thing. It's pretty much. It makes it so you can use your abilities at any point, like at first and then leap. Like you can E on the target, like chase them. Like so, let's say I am going river. Oh, I see a champion. Champion, I can throw my E, then leap on them. I'll get a sex stack, and then I can uh, Q and W, and then I get my ferocity. So it's actually quite a ginormous buff. I'm not sure how much it matters. Maybe it, it makes them feel more modern, though. I'm not sure though. I I wish I kind of played the more champion more, just so I, I can say more about it, whether it's a good or bad change. But uh. <sighs> I, don't know, I kind of feel bad. Though. I like having a say on things, but uh, I don't know, man. Oh well. I mean, it's a huge buff, though, if you understand what I just said. Uh, Rengar will now be able to leap. So next ability, Rengar will not be able to leap after 0.335 seconds in brush or camouflage, uh, or send his E crystal black mist camouflage consistently, rather than based on a 0.3 to 0.45 second leap timer. Leap range has been slightly increased to offset variability. Um, uh, Ferocious Feline Ringer now has a, a, a ferocity resource bar that indicates how much ferocity he currently has. Stacks genera generated by leaps will have a different color, so you'll know if you'll gain ferocity in your next leap. Does that not exist on Ringer right now? I was playing Wild Rift and it seemed fine. Like, I see how my ferocity bar. Does he not have a ferocity bar in the league right now? Um. We're gonna have to frosty music for that. We get much frost. You know, get guys. This is gonna look really funny, but like, we're actually gonna queue up for a game really fast, and I'm gonna see what the heck 
this is. Because I'm actually really curious. If I had a Rengar skin, I'd probably just pick Mecha Rengar, honestly. I mean, I, you know, I like robots, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is really funny. But, like, I actually am just really curious. Because, like, uh, does not already have a resource bar? But, like, they might meant to just be, like, there's a color. It's color-coded, like, because now when you leap, it'll be like, let me say it's green or something. Like, oh, I already leaped, so I can't get a ferocity from it. Maybe the there isn't. What the hell? That's a... Is, isn't this a resource bar? Dude, it's so weird playing this game. It's playing a lot of riff. I know I'm joking. Um, I don't know. Is there not a resource bar? I don't know. I mean, there is a resource. I don't know. I don't really understand that. They might just be meaning that the, now it's, there, there's a, it's color code to show the leap because of the new feature. Like, so if you leaped, it'll be a different color. You know, I don't know. I, I, but I have no idea. There is a resource bar. Um. So maybe enemies don't see it. I don't know. Uh, all ferocity stacks fall off after uh, it was eight seconds out, ten seconds out of combat. That is actually crazy. Um, I never actually really done it because I'm just focusing on the basics. But I think like one thing you can do is kill a bunch of uh, camps. Uh, you know, like get your ferocity Q, you ult, you Q, and then you jump, and then your Q goes off, and I think you get a ferocity stack. Then you E W Q, then you just Q again. So that actually, I think, makes this combo more. Deadly. I'm not even sure if that's how it works. I might be wrong, but like, regardless, that's a huge buff. A huge buff. D adjustment. It's a huge buff. Um, bone tooth necklace takedown timer within 1.5 seconds, three seconds of damage to enemy champion. That is crazy buff. That's a. Cr I mean, honestly, this is more one more reasonable buff. So like, because it's like 1.5 seconds, that's kind of crazy. But maybe it's because like he had to get the kill. So. Eh. It's still a buff. It's a ginormous buff. Um, th so they, I'm not sure why they didn't say the leap range here, because he can leap. Now it's it, it's kind of like Vi. So before he could only leap 0.3 to 0.45 seconds. It was like some kind of internal timer. Now it's 0.35 seconds after leaving a bush, but his leap range has been increased slightly. Um, I'm not sure why it doesn't say the the increase in range here on the PB. It said the increase in range. It was like 25 or 20 or something like that. I think. But it's weird that they didn't put the, the range increase here. That's kind of unlike Riot. Does it say, we increased this slightly? Like, what does slightly mean? Yeah. Are we going to be like mobile games now where they just keep on saying, we slightly nerfed this? Like, what do you mean you slightly nerfed it? Because sometimes they just don't even know what they're talking about. So, yeah, uh, just just do keep in mind that he can leap far, further out of the bushes. I think he might be able to leap out of to mid lane very easily now and actually destroy you. I don't know. Like, more consistently. Q savagely. Um, Rengar, let me make sure my freaking stream's on. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, Rengar's Q empowered basic attack is now always a critical strike. Instead of regular critical strike damage, each 1% critical strike chance increases this empowered attack's damage by 0.66%, 0.99% with Infinity Edge Perfection Passes, updated sc uh, scratching post. Q savagery now also applies to basic attacks against towers. You talk about the attack speed bonus? What, what does that mean? Maybe it means like with Trinity Force or something. Q Savage no longer applies to base attack against pot plants. What? Did, did this Q, does this Q, okay, guys, we're going to practice it again because in, in Wild Rift, my Q destroys towers. <laughs> this is the stupidest video. This is, this, is, this is probably the stupidest patch video I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I don't care though. <laughs> oh my god. Like, like, I don't know why some. Why is like. <laughs> hey, hey guys, we want to name the draft. I, th I think it's a boy though. What do you think? <laughs> okay, let's look at this. I might be wrong. Maybe this is a volume of Rift thing. But I'm pretty sure his Q works in towers. I Why can't I attack towers right away, guys? Oh, I just put 10 minutes. Why can't I attack towers right away? That's bullshit. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. It does work. Maybe it'll talk about the attack speed bonus. Buy some HP or something. Uh, war mod. Well, I didn't know. I, my Q gets it. What? Uh, I, I'm, I'm the attack speed is working. What? What, what does that even mean? This is such a confusing patch notes, guys. I have no idea what the hell they're talking about. You have to like think into like a th fifth dimension or something to understand what the hell they even mean. Like if I don't understand it, who the hell, uh, who understands it? So is Q savagery now applies to basic attacks against towers. Savagery no longer applies to basic attacks against players. So does it mean it doesn't work on plants anymore? Like, I don't know what this means. I also don't know, like, like th does this mean, like, th does, does Vanguard's Q do the same damage or is it treated as a crit now? Instead of regular critical strike damage. I don't know. I think they kept the damage the same. I think it just always crits, and now if you build crit, yeah, it's actually quite deadly. But regardless, that's a ginormous buff because it makes his assassination potential more viable. So it's because Rengars aren't even building just full lethality; they're building like crit items. So uh, regardless, that's a really big buff. Regardless, like if you don't build crit, you won't notice a thing. If you build crit, you're, you're buffed. So yeah. Uh, bo uh, bullet strike, uh, no cast, only throw. Oh, I'm saying that, Jesus. Ranger can now throw his E bullet strike instantly with zero cast time during leaps. That is actually crazy because all leaps now just his ultimate leap. So that's easy stacks, easy point and click. Um, zero cast time. Like, does it mean it just gets thrown out? Like, I wonder if it goes out sooner because there's no cast time. Um,. Probably. Uh, that's kind of crazy. You can get a freaking ma uh, you can E someone, root them maybe. Uh, now Kranz, uh True Strike, True Sight, and Double Vision 150 units around the first enemy hit for two seconds. I think this is what it does in Wild Rift. Um, yeah, I, I swear that's what it does in Wild Rift. It said to use. Maybe it doesn't? I guess it doesn't. Okay, well, he, he's freaking broken in this game. I, okay, never mind. Maybe it's Challenging Smite that does that or something. I, I don't know too much about Wild Rift. Um, Predatory Insight uh, is R. Now grants not only True Sight, but also Normal Vision 1 new units around the nearest enemy. That's actually crazy, because now you, he can't just get 100% baited. So that's actually pretty crazy. It just, all around, he just got straight up buffed in any, any, every way possible. Every way possible, this is a ginormous buff. Where's the vibe buffs? I don't know, in outer space. It, it was launched with the car into space. Uh, e, spinning slash, cool, um, premier, uh, cooldown reduction per critical strike was 1 second to 2 seconds against champions. Now it's 0. 0.75, 1.5 seconds against champions. Quite a huge nerf. Uh, really good because, I, I again, like... Let's just read this. Uh, it says our cooldown was 110 to 90 seconds. Now it's 130 to 90 seconds. Trimmers were not maxing our ultimates, but now they're probably going to have to because... Uh, yeah, the cooldown sucks now. Um, again, it's like Vi, Vi can never be viable for pro play or like anything. She can never get love, but we we literally have a point and click champion being played in challenger games in pro play, and he, and and he has been in the game, I think usually for like five months, three months at least, and it's just like how has this guy not been nerfed, you know? Like honestly, how has he not been nerfed? I don't know. I think he had a slight nerf a few a, a few ago, but it was such so minor it didn't even matter. It's just like I I just can't believe some shit, man. Um, Immortal Shield Bow. It was ten life steal. Now it's eight. 
Uh, Masterwork item, same thing. Shield mount was 275 to 650. Now it's 270. Now it's 275 to 700. Same uh, applies to Blood Ward, which is the Orin passive. Missive, Mythic passive was five bonus 80 and 50 bonus uh, health. Now it's five bonus 80 and 70 health. Um, this nerfing the sustain, but giving you more uh, like the shield isn't the biggest deal because usually 80 carries get this. Um, it's a slight shield increase, which I guess is fine. Ooh, excuse me. I sorry. I, I actually had some soda before, like some some orange juice. Fizzy orange Japanese drink. I don't know what that was. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I drink. Uh, I feel like the shield bow's been buffed to have its shield mount pretty much back to how it was before, wasn't it? Like, let's look. The moral shield bow, where was that big nerf? Uh, it was. It was 300, 800. Yeah, it was way stronger before. I mean, it's still fine, but I mean, I, yeah, it's been fine. It's reasonable because they nerfed their life steal and stuff. Um, to get, mythic passives are kind of irrelevant, honestly. So, yeah, I mean, maybe you get 20 or 40 HP in a game. Woo. I mean, it's pretty fine, though. So, yeah, whatever. Blade of the Rune King life steal was 10%, now it's 8%. That's a Viego nerf because, well, uh, he likes that item. And I like rushing that item a lot, so RIP that, that kind of sucks. But, I mean, it, it nerfs other champions, too. Um, Gore Drinker going to nerf, uh, which sucks. So, yeah. The reverse of Gavrilla with Gore Drinker doesn't even matter. Vampire Acceptor was 10 life skills, 8. Yeah. Ruins, Revenant Hunter was removed. That's pretty good. I'm not sure. This was more of a solo queue thing, honestly, because in pro play, I don't think it's good at all because there's no kills, and when there's kills, the game's decided. So... Um, yeah, I think that's a more like solo queue thing. I think it's healthy for solo queue because in solo queue, I don't, like in pro play, people don't really take Revenant Hunter. I do not think they do at all. Um, so, yeah. I mean, they probably do. Did they? I think it's in some cases. If you ever take Hail, please, I think you might. But even then, it's kind of like whatever, honestly. Because it, do it doesn't do anything unless you get kills. In some pro play, there's no kills. Um, now we have Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter has entered League, guys. Gain 70 gold when you claim a bounty hunter sack. This bounty is increased by 20 gold for each bounty hunter, hunter uh, sack. So... I mean, people already have their opinions about this thing. But, you know, let's do some uh, quick... How much total gold is this? 550 gold. Um, it's really not bad, honestly. Um, it's, it's like, who would it be good on? I don't know. It's weird, because again, it's kind of like, it's a win more thing. I feel like this is a rune you would take if you were elo boosting. And I, again, I don't, I, I don't, don't elo boost. I don't do that, guys. But, like, I mean, I guess it's from the domination tree, but, like, it just doesn't do anything. But maybe the dominate because, like, everything else in the domination tree does something, even if you don't get kills, so, I don't know. Maybe the domination tree is just too toxic of a tree, you know? It just snowballs too much, maybe. Um... It might be really strong if you, like, again, like, because if you don't have any kills, let's say I was playing Evelyn, does Ultimate Hunter and Re Relentless Hunter even do much? I mean, like, you, 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 you'd be surprised how little Revenant Hunter or Re Relentless Hunter is even active when you're playing Evelyn, honestly. Um, that's because when you kill a camp, you have to wait a little bit, and then you get your passive. Um... It might be strong on champions like Evelyn or even Fiddlesticks if you take, but maybe not because that's because it might be really strong paired with Futures Market. Imagine if you got actually got some kills early and bought Futures Market at like a super early Mythic item. But again, you're playing Fiddlesticks and Evelyn, which are like they can't really walk up to you and one shot you. 
I don't know. Really weird rune. Let's see how it goes. Honestly, it's. I feel like it's just more of a pub stomp rune. Um, but unless there's a strategy with that uh, futures market, healing from fully energized attack with flea footwork was one ten to one hundred. Uh, forty percent bonus AD, three percent AP. Now it's ten to one hundred. So that's still the same. Uh, thirty percent bonus AD, uh, twenty percent AP. So they nerfed the ratios by ten percent each. Um, pretty f uh, fine. I guess it was just a strong AD carry thing. Probably really strong on Jin, honestly. Um, I wonder what that nerf is supposed to target. It definitely targets Jin. I don't know who else. It, it's not any like tank or anything like Munda, really. At least I don't think it is. What was the per? I, I was really don't. I mean, I guess they're just nerfing the yeah, nerfing the sustain a bit. Da, 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 da. What? Sustain also fell a bit out of place in domination. That's true. Um. Oh, we still have this rune. <laughs> Life. Oh no. Never mind. This is not domination. Sorry, it's red. I'm oh, sorry. I'm crazy. <laughs> Life steal for legend stack was point uh, six. Up to nine percent now it's point four. Up to six percent at fifteen stacks. Um, new after reaching maximum legend stacks, your maximum health increases by a hundred. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, people also argue that you are you benefit more as an eighty carry from this, and this is more like I don't know. Interesting. Is this supposed to be like if if you're on a long engage, you can't just abuse this or sustain so hard. So it's overall pretty good. Um, it nerfed the laning phase a little bit because of those little sustain changes. That's nice. Um, overall, it's just better. It's more readable. Like, oh, this guy has this HP. I, they don't have to, like, lifesteal a billion HP. Um, what else? Gemstones and Prestige points are combined to a single new currency that never expired. Mythic Gemstones. Uh... A one-time mission on March 31st, 2020 that rewards 10 Mythic Essence. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. Mythic... Mythic Essence, okay. Some Mythic changes. I mean, I'm pretty sure people already know about this stuff. Um... Mythic skills and accessory the shop will take every three months. Uh, so, you know, some skins, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't think this is really anything. Prestige skins can appear after one year of their original lease or at least one year. They'll go up in cost as they get released more. Um, um, they'll be available for one month, now it's three for three months, okay. So, Procedure, Canso, <coughs> uh, Team of, Diana, Aurelia, Thresh, and Kaisa. Wow. So yeah, if you want to save Essence, I guess, I guess you get to get these, and then you can want these. Aurelia one's fucking. Her eyes are creepy. Um, higher investment. This is I. I don't like this stuff. So, to recognize the higher requirement investment required to obtain skins in 2018 and 2019, players who own these skins before patch 12.5 will receive additional exclusive 2022 editions of these skins. Commemorative proceed skins will never be available via shop loots or rerolls. So, selling skins will be gradually distributed to original owners over the next month, and it's just like. It's just like, bro, there was people who literally had all the skins and just re-rolled and instantly got the skin. So it's like, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of exclusive shit. I like shit that, like, is rare, but you can still get it somehow. Like, they should have made this shit, like, 500 freaking essence or some shit. Because it's, it's like, you're rewarding people who just spent, like, 
eight thousand dollars on their game or something. Um, I, 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 I also still think because there's there was people who were like, oh, I'm, I'm, he, this guy literally spent like three thousand dollars on like he, sh he said on he was trying to get he was on Twitter too, he was trying to get, what should I call it? I forget what skin was, but he was trying to get a prestige skin. I think it was the Caitlyn one. And he was like, oh, I, I should have got it that patch. I was a little bit off. And now they're making a skin for her prestige where she has an altered version. And he literally spent $3,000. And it's just like, I just don't think that's healthy for the brain. And yeah, you can argue, oh, yeah, well, they know what they're getting into. It's their money. Oh, uh, our drop rates are all there. But like, I don't even think he understands. I think because he's so desperate for that exclusivity. And like he just feels bad because of the exclusive. Like I, I honestly just don't think exclusivity. I don't think it's. I don't think it's healthy. I think exclusivity is actually really toxic mentally. I actually, I, I, I actually really firmly believe that it's actually like really bad for like the mental health of humans. Um, because like he, he he's spending three thousand dollars on something that statistically won't happen. Like he needs to first off roll for a prestige skin, which is like, I think like one out of like a thousand about, even if it was like a one out of like 500 or 800, you're rolling for like every single prestige skin in the game. So to get it, he needs to get like a one out of like, even if it was like 500 at what, for a prestige skin, he, he has to roll for like, you know, like a one out of 5k drop, which is actually insane. So it, it, it's probably more than that. I'm being very, low with my estimates here because you'd also assume to the own other skins oh no that's the thing that also sucks is um they changed it so now um when you're opening chests because oh look at me look at me i i opened a chest and look what i got prestige caitlin i can't do anything with this i already owned her i got this from opening a chest so you only don't get the same skin with reroll. So like he's opening chests and then he's rerolling. But even the reroll is extremely unlikely because I, I kind of doubt he owns a lot of prestige skins just because of how he worded it. He didn't really st talk about that. He might, but regardless if he does or doesn't, the chance of getting it through opening the chest himself is like impossible. And then with rerolling, it's like a big good luck, honestly. Um... I don't know because it can't force. I'm not sure if you own the. Uh, let's say I owned arcade, uh, arcade uh, prestige Caitlyn, and then I you know I rerolled three uh, shards. Right. I don't know if it if it can give me this. I don't think. I don't know because because before you could force it because if you owned every skin it would just force a new skin, but I'm pretty sure it just does a normal roll and if it hits the procedural it'll go to the procedural and then it'll. Be like, oh, you don't own Arcade Caitlyn. You own Arcade Caitlyn, so we'll give you a different one. I think that's how it works now. But I got this through a chest, so it's like, wow. I literally got a prestige skin through a chest of a skin I already own. And it's kind of like a slap in the face even for me. Because it's like, wow, I worked so hard for that pass. 2,000 tokens. And then three months later, I open a chest and I get the skin. Why did I play all those games? You know? It's kind of a slap in the face. It's like, wh why are you even able to get this from a chest? If I'm, like, like, like it, it, it's either I, I shouldn't have got this from at all, or, or the chest should have given. If he did give me this, I should be able to re-roll this into a different one until I get one that I don't own or something, and it automatically gets consumed. Because like, why do I even? Own? I I gotta keep this from. Cause it's a slap in the face, honestly. It's just like, wh why? It's just stupid. Like. It's, it's a double-edged sword. I don't think Ryan really thinks about it like that at all. Um, what else am I doing? There's something about... Which, to share regarding showcase of Master of uh, I don't really care, honestly. I don't know what... I don't know. It's this MTX shit, honestly. Bugfuss nerf. W bug... John W. Bugfuss nerf. This bug where John's W's after range has incorrectly revert, reverted to edge to edge. It has been restored and now cast from center to center. And its range indicator has been also been indexed. Note this issue had been several impact on John's 12.5 win rate. So I expect to see this to be somewhat of a nerf. Yeah, that's actually quite a big nerf. It, you had to be the center to center before. Now it was edge to edge. That, that actually had a ginormous range before. That's huge. 
Fix bug where Tom Kitchens are devoured and allied Senna while she was inside her uh, black mist. Both champions would disappear from enemies' view. That's funny. Fix the bug where Lux's E lo uh, loosens Singularity projectile with proc spell shield on all enemies that passes through. Even though, even though the projectile itself doesn't deal damage or CC, that's funny. Uh, that's a huge nerf, honestly. That's a huge nerf. Because, like, against server and stuff. Fix the bug where if, if a word was placed on top of existing word, the next new one would start dancing, moving randomly around the older one. That's weird. That's a really weird one. Oh, his skins are really cute, though. Uh, everyone's fine. The this fortune one's really cute. That one's really cute. Uh, Vayne's okay. I, I kind of wish I did more with Vayne. There's no real projectiles. Bats can be cute. I don't think you can make any animal cute. Uh, they didn't make the bat bats that cute, though. It could have been a really cute skin, though, but whatever. Um, the misfortune ones are really cute. Adorable, though. I kind of feel bad for the bats. I don't know why they didn't make the bats cute, because I could have played it. Uh, Jinx skin's pretty cool. I like the splash art. So, yeah, I'll get that. Um, but, yeah, I just think, I just don't, like I said, I just like exclusivity. I, I, I played Gears of War 5 for a little bit, and there was, like, a lot of talks about exclusivity. I just hate it. I think it's really damaging because it makes you feel like you have to play or do something, and it's it's just unhealthy. Like, I just, you know, because it's like, but like, I'm not someone who was hired or paid to do that or like think like that. Because like, you can say, oh well, they know what they're getting into. We have all the drop rates, but like, it's still gambling, even if you say the drop rates, and it's just like. And a day, I mean, I don't know when they're ever gonna make gambling restriction laws because I don't like gambling in general. I really don't. I wish things were just like, oh, here you go, that's it, get this and like that, that's it. And yeah, because like, it, imagine if they just made the prestige skin a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, right? And even after, and like, I know, it w I, 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 I believe the, the first prestige skins like the KDA skins were that much. If you want, I, because I don't think passes were out then. I think, or maybe they were. I don't know. But I, I'm not honestly sure, honestly. If they were out, then they were cheaper. But if you had to buy the prestige uh, tokens, then they were like $150 skins. That's still a healthier system than, like, so they get all four of the old, like, or two or three of the OG KDA skins. You had to spend, you know, 300 to like $600. That's still better than some guy having a panic attack and feeling like shit and spending $3,000. For something he's statistically not going to get, like it just doesn't make sense. It's it, it, and it, it's to me it's just predatory. Maybe they don't mean it. And like I don't know. I, I'm not trying to be mean. I, I'm just saying, I f I feel for that guy because I I you can say oh well he knows he's doing it. it's his fault but like you'd be surprised the human. A lot of these things are designed to like get like it, there's a lot of psychology involved you know and you can always to people who aren't really like familiar with like high-end psychology they can be like oh well they know what they're getting into they, they, but they don't understand they were actually engineered to do that you know and I, again i'm not trying to be mean i'm I, again like i whoever was in charge of that I, i'd gladly have a nice coffee with him and talk to him you know because that's all it's about it's about friendship right but i i'm just saying what i think so that's that I, i'm not trying to be mean don't don't go off and shit talk anyone guys okay but yeah, that's that's gonna be it for the patch notes video. It's been this is a this is a funny video. If someone actually listened to all this, I greatly appreciate you because you know you're probably a big fan. You're my number one fan if you actually watch this entire thing. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, bye.